Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to try to record something a little different and uh, just different view, I guess. And now that I have the other computer hooked up behind me, um, that I can change the monitor, I kind of like that. So I just wanted to make a video and try to see how I could just make some quick videos. And I wanted to talk more about cold fish in the mangler. I talked more about us. I had other ideas on these movies. Um, but the thing about cold fish is it's crazy how people's personalities can get you swept away and how your life can change so quickly. And just the guy in the movie, uh, you know, he's like, come check out my shop, come check out my shop, and, you know, have your daughter work for me, and just everything, just <laughs> just pushing everything right along, and it kind of reminds me of an instance, which was, like, the first time that I smoked crack, <laughs> kind of crazy, but uh, I know there was a guy that went to my high school, uh, there was a guy I was friends with, and there was a guy that was older who went to my high school, and he was looking for my friend. And, um, to hang out with him or whatever, I don't know, but, um, we, he wanted to take me to, to help find him. And I thought that I knew maybe some other places where he was hanging out at. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I ended up kind of going on a journey with this guy and it ended up being an all night ordeal where we couldn't get a hold of my friend. And, uh, basically this guy introduced me to like crack for the first time. And back then, you know, I partied and I drank and I smoked weed and stuff, but this was never something that I got into before. But, uh, there are just some people in life that you kind of got to stand your guard against. And of course, like I said, I was different back then where I was kind of just going along with the flow with whatever, you know, I was just experimenting and just getting into trouble anyway, but, uh, you know, the guy in the movie, you could see him as kind of like a weak character, because he just kind of goes along with the stuff, but, uh, he doesn't stand his ground until finally, at the end of the movie, when, uh, the killer tells him to sleep with his killer wife, and, um, that's when he says, you know, that's the one thing that I won't do, but... It reminded me, too, of a scenario from Six Feet Under, which is a different, totally different show that was on HBO. It was about a family that ran a funeral parlor, and the actor that was in Dexter was in that movie, but he played a homosexual in that one. But I watched it a long time ago, but he ended up meeting this crazy, kind of crack addict, crazy dude that, um, I think he might have pretended to be somebody who needed help at first, and this guy was kind of caring and took him in. And then, like, he pulled a gun on him, like, in the vehicle, and basically, like, made him do whatever all night. And just, it was just, like, a hellish night. These things can happen, and there's crazy people out there. You know, maybe not to the extreme as cold fish, you know, so often. But uh, that would be the extremely rare cases. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely a sense of realism to that movie that makes it more disturbing. And, I don't know, The Mangler, I just thought, it's a really cool movie, you know, the more that, I, after I watched it, you know, I think about it more and more, just how cool it is, how I could just put, pop it in and just watch it again, and it's just an easy watch, and not knowing that the main detective character was Buffalo Bill in the Silence of the Lands, but, I mean, it makes sense why, if I didn't actually know that actor... And it's been a while since I watched The Silence of the Lambs, but I need to watch that. I got the Criterion collection of that. This is cool, but... Just not knowing really who that actor was. Like, those are completely different roles, where he's like a psychotic transvestite in one, and then the other one's he's the detective. But I thought his voice was kind of weird. I thought his voice was... I don't know if I can really imitate it, but it's just kind of deep, and it sounded like almost like he was faking it like I don't know if that was his real voice or even maybe it sounded like it was even dubbed but then you know the voice is the thing that 
I remember about Buffalo Bill. And that's the thing that kind of ties ties it together there. <laughs> uh, it was like it puts the lotion on the skin. And that's like how he talks as the detective. Like, there's only three things that matter or that are real, and that's God, guns, and country. And the rest is bullshit. He just, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's funny, though. But I also wanted to talk about how horrible the acting was and uh, the mangler. <laughs> because especially, like, some of the female character, like, the main female character or whatever, like, I mean, it's not really great all around, but Robert England probably is the shining actor in that one. Uh, plays, like, the main villain. But just, like, with the girls crying when, like, the old lady dies and is killed by the mangler and stuff, like... You don't really feel compassion for them because they're crying and stuff. Their mourning is kind of outrageous a little bit. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have like the realism that cold fish does. But like it took it, it did kind of take itself seriously in the mangler. But at the same time, it's like you're not really going to feel that kind of connection with the characters. You know, people die and it's just like, oh, it's just gruesome and it's just, you know, whatever. But, so I thought I would mention that about how the acting was really kind of terrible in that movie. And then I've watched a lot of uh, reviews of that, which there isn't even a a whole lot. If you look up, like, Mangler reviews, you'll find a handful of them. And I should just make the video, you know, I I need to do, like, a Mangler review instead of titling it 31 Days of Horror, so it will actually pop up. But I don't really care about that, but eventually it will probably... But, the Mangler, you know, I've read that I guess that he filmed some of those scenes in like another country or something, and some of, some of those actors might have been foreign, and the, some of the voices might actually be dubbed, but the, the, the actors or the actresses might not even really be like professional <laughs> actresses and stuff. It could be, you know, they're not very experienced at all, so that could kind of show. That could be a good excuse for that. But I'm not complaining because you don't go into the Mangler expecting, you know, something ultra great and realistic and serious and everything. Um, but man, oh, I don't know. Cold Fish, the Mangler, I talked about The Shining and Cabin Fever and The Devil's Rejects. Another thing about the mangler is that it's supposed to be directed by toby hooper or however you pronounce his name but he from what i heard from one of the reviewers said that he quit like halfway during the movie so there's also another director and they they said you know to call it uh one of his movies is kind of a stretch because he wasn't there for like the full length or whatever uh but, you know, I love it that there are so few reviews on these movies, and I just love sitting and listening to different people talk about these movies and see, like, what they cover in their reviews and what they miss. And there was somebody who was really insightful on Cold Fish talking about how it asks us about pacifism, and I probably talked about that in my video, but he talked about it, it asks us, you know, as an individual or as a society, how far pacifism will get you, you know, just letting others kind of get their way over you, how long will it take until you'll fight back, but that's kind of like what it said on the the movie cover too, how far will you be pushed, oh, I got some new movies today, I got The Orphanage, uh, some I got you know some movies on sale, and that's by well, that like Guillermo del Toro. He at least produced it, I guess. I, I was thinking that he directed it, but maybe not. But I've read a lot of people say that's a pretty creepy movie. It's pretty highly rated, so kind of looking forward to that. I also got a Child's Play set that did not it doesn't have the first one, but it has like the second one, the third one, The Bride of Chucky, and another one the seed of chucky or something but yeah i really want to watch the second one and the third one i've never seen those i was so terrified as a child to watch those 
And I remember it was probably the third one or something. It was on TV, and it was like my dad and my cousin were there, and like, we're going to watch this. And like, I wanted to watch it, and I'm like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch it. And like, when it first started, I was like, no, like, I'm not going to watch it. I'm like, shut it off. And like, I refused to watch it, so we didn't watch it. So it was, it really creeped me out. Just seeing the cover with the doll on it just freaked me out. But it's so crazy how things creep you out as a child but uh, always the scene where Chucky like stabbed underneath the bed I always thought maybe he's underneath my bed with a knife <laughs> so just his face was kind of creepy how it's like so innocent but he's like a murderer a doll I don't know doesn't totally terrify me at all now and I enjoy the movies for what they are and the, I've seen the new the new child's play it's pretty good Oh, Cabin Fever. I've looked at a lot of reviews of the remake, and pretty much everybody says the same thing. I have no idea why it was remade. I guess Eli Roth had something to do with it. He was the producer or something, so he must have gave it the okay. But, I mean, maybe, like, the gore blood might look a little more modern. The video might look a little cleaner, but, like, the acting's terrible. It's really, it's not better at all, and, I, and it's like scene for scene, but just worse, and I just don't know why that even exists, <laughs> I don't, I mean, somebody, maybe somebody wanted to give a tribute to it by making a remake, and maybe he thought it was a good idea to keep the original alive, to just, to make a remake, and have it be modern, I don't know. But, yeah, there will be a WWE pay-per-view coming up eventually in some time. I don't know, maybe a couple weeks, I don't know when it is, but it's going to be hell of a sell, so I'll probably do a review and on some predictions, and I probably won't be, like, 100% correct on the predictions like I was last time. I think that was just luck, but WWE is pretty predictable, so who knows. Oh, boy. So, maybe I'll make more videos like this often, too, and just talk about different subjects. But uh, I know that these will upload pretty fast. I might not even put an intro and an ending in this video. I might just upload some of these just like this. Let's just see how fast they get up uploaded. I want to share something that I really like about the Wii U, too. A feature that I've been using a lot, and that's this TV button down there. They put it to where you basically can have like a universal TV remote in the uh, gamepad. And because this TV that I bought used, the big one behind me, came with like a universal remote. It didn't come with the original remote, and it worked fine, but then the batteries died or something. I went to replace them. I had a hard time syncing it up again. And uh, one of the main things was not being able to switch the input, like it shows on here. The input, like from HDMI 1 to HDMI 2, etc. You know, if I have the Xbox hooked up and the PlayStation or whatever else. Um, but see, this has the numbers as the input, the power, the channel, and the volume. But it works great with this TV, so I'll, I'll do the volume. But I have those gun controllers in the way, so it's kind of hard for it to reach the signal. Let's see. It's, I just have to have it aimed right. Oh, come on. You know what? Let's just do the power. There we go. See that? That was the power. That worked easier. So, we got to turn it back on now. Did I get it? Uh, it's hard to tell if the light's on or not, because I got those gun controllers up there. It's probably not a good spot for them.
There we go. That might work better like that. Get some of that stuff out of the way. Anyway, I'm feeling kind of good about this little setup here. But I've always been moving things, but you know, some things needed to move, like these tables. And this table that I'm using now was in the other study room. And I had my printer and like all kinds of papers and all kinds of stuff on there. And they just pile up after a while. And I'll just eat at the computer and just be a slob and stuff. And it's like, it gets dirty and dusty. And so got to move stuff and clean it every now and then. But this will probably be the setup for a while. Um, yeah. Anyway. Needs a 15 minute boring video. All right, I'm going to try to upload this. Let's see how long it takes. God bless, guys. I had the wrong mouse. You see it moving in the background? <laughs>